I'm Insomniac and this is the Seiko SRPD-63. First of all, I want to give a big shout out to Rosemary for picking this watch up to be reviewed here on the channel. Do me a favor and follow her on Instagram at rosemarydesignsnj. I'll put it here on screen. Follow her over there on Instagram. I've been interested in taking a look at the new Seiko 5 stuff, so I was excited for this to come in. Uh, let's take a look at this watch piece by piece. The case on this piece starts this review off on a good note without even talking aesthetics because as you saw in the specs in the beginning, this is a fairly large watch at 42.5mm, but if you noticed, the lug to lug length was only 46mm. Because of the fairly small lug length paired with the height of this case, it actually feels and looks generally smaller and more comfortable on the wrist than what I expected for a watch of this size. The shape of the case is very nice, and the mix of polished bezel edge, case sides and case back with the brushed tops looks good. One thing I really like here is the crown guard situation. Another little trick Seiko used here to give the watch a smaller footprint is moving the crown to the 4 o'clock position. With a beefy crown guard, that would ordinarily create an awkward bulge down the lower lug here, but what they did is shave the top of the lower section of the crown guard, creating this nice compound curve that's functional for lessening the bulk down here, but also gives the side of the case a unique shape. Pretty cool. The case back is a screw down exhibition style which gives you a nice view of the 4R36 automatic movement in action. The bezel has a nice green insert which matches the dial perfectly, and the textured pattern around the edge of the bezel is actually fairly grippy which makes manipulating the unidirectional bezel very easy. Although everything I've said about the case up to this point has been positive, there are a couple surprising negatives to point out here. While we're at the bezel, we'll start with the bezel action. It's light, but not like it's easy to turn light. Uh, it's light as in, I'd be nervous about diving with this piece because I do think that accidental bumps and snags could turn the bezel without you realizing it. The click also sounds kind of cheap, I'll let you listen to it. And you have a bit of play between the set positions no matter where you set the bezel. The most surprising negative though is something that I'd hope is just a defect with my specific watch because I expect way more from Seiko. Take a look down at this lower right lug you'll notice that the end link doesn't appear to fit properly between the lugs. I immediately figured that the end link was bent, but upon closer inspection, the end link appears to be fine. It seems as though the lug is slightly misshapen. It almost appears to be bent outward. It's not something anybody would notice without looking closely, but that's pretty unacceptable for Seiko. The dial on this watch is excellent. The backdrop is a beautiful emerald green with a light sunburst effect that plays with light depending on how you move the wrist to create hues anywhere between light emerald green and an almost black. You have a steep angled chapter ring around the outer edge of the dial with a white printed minute track with slightly thicker lines printed at every five minute interval. On the outer edge of the dial, you have applied hour markers, which are basically large loom fillings with polished rose gold colored edges. One thing I really like here is the fact that the rose gold tone that they used for the marker edges, hands, and text looks great against the deep greens of the dial, but it's subtle enough that it isn't in your face fake gold. In fact, at a quick glance, I thought it was standard polished silver steel, so well done there. I also like the unique touch of the extensions from the 12, 9, and 6 markers toward the center of the dial. Below the 12 o'clock index, you have a nicely applied Seiko logo with the Seiko Sport logo below that, and automatic printed on the dial above 6. At 3 o'clock, you have a day and date calendar, nicely positioned to take the place of what would have been a 3 o'clock index. Last but not least, you have the hands. Your hour and minute hands have a very unique shape, and the two hands are shaped differently from one another, so you can easily differentiate one from the other, even without paying attention to the difference in length. Your second hand is a stick-style hand with a round, loom-filled counterbalance, and all of the hands have a great length for this dial, and have very defined tips, and aesthetically look great with this dial. For usable complications, we have a day and date calendar at the 3 o'clock position. It's large enough to read easily. The white disc used under the black text matches the white loom fillings really well, and everything is nicely centered in the window. Well, usually. Not really sure what's going on with the uh, Tuesday right now, but 
through, throughout the time that I've had it, usually everything is nice and centered in those windows. It looks good and works well overall. Seiko uses Lumabrite for the loom fillings on this dial. The hour markers, hour and minute hands, and the counterbalance on the second hand all have generous amounts of loom filling. Now it could just be the case that I've had a lot of poorly loomed watches coming through here recently until today, but this is some of the best loom that I've seen on this channel recently. Not only does it all glow bright and even, but it lasts fairly long and it's sensitive, so it charges easily even with standard indoor light sources or only a minute or so in the sun. I'm pretty impressed with this loom. The only thing I didn't like about the loom situation is an aesthetic choice made by Seiko, which I'm not going to subtract any points for, but I don't really understand the thought process here. In fact, if you have a theory, feel free to leave it in the comments below. The loom in the second hand. Loom in the second hand is completely acceptable, but the counterbalance is the back of the second hand, so the loom is effectively showing you the opposite of where the second hand is pointing at any given time. It's kind of strange. Time at a glance on this piece is excellent. The high contrast between the large white loom fillings, white printed minute track and finely polished borders of the indices and hands against the dark green backdrop mixed with the fine points on all the hands makes finding the exact time a quick and easy task. The only small criticism is the minute track. Uh, I do prefer a minute track to be on the surface of the dial, but I do like the cleanliness of the hour markers only layout here. And a minute track on the chapter ring is fine, but the angle of the chapter ring is steep enough that depending on how you view the watch, which angle you're viewing it from above, it's easy to lose parts of the chapter ring from view. Overall though, this piece has great legibility. The bracelet on this watch is mostly great. It's your standard three-link design, all brushed steel, which I prefer over any polishing for the sake of fingerprints, has a great weight and heft to it, which balances out the weight of the case perfectly, and the double locking clasp works well, stays in place, and has the Seiko brand name nicely engraved into it. I also appreciate the fact that there are four fine adjustment positions at the clasp, so you can make small size tweaks without removing or adding more links if you're close to where you want to be with the size. My only complaint with the bracelet isn't something that I can really show you on camera, it's more of a feel issue. I actually didn't find this bracelet to be completely comfortable, and I've worn tons of watches with three link bracelets, most of which I found to be very comfortable. So I can't exactly explain why it wasn't completely comfortable, but it definitely wasn't the kind of bracelet that you don't notice throughout the day. Overall though, the bracelet is robust, and it looks good on this piece. As of the time of this review, Seiko has this watch listed for $295, but we got it on Amazon for $236 from the Seiko store, I believe. Assuming that that misshapen lug issue is just an issue with this watch, and I can't imagine that it would be an issue with every watch. Assuming that it's literally just this watch, uh, the SRPD63 is definitely a solid value. It's a handsome watch, it has great visual presence without being large or gaudy or too flashy. It has a reliable movement, it has some subtly unique aesthetics, and even though it's certainly no pro dive watch, it is built well enough that you could take a swim in it without worrying about damaging it. And it's the type of watch that looks good with anything from jeans and a t-shirt to a button down and a blazer, and it's a Seiko. So for those of you who are brand snobs on a budget, there's that. Overall, I think you're getting a lot of watch for just over $200. If you have one of these or even a similar model, definitely leave some comments down below. Let everybody know how you like it. Make sure that you subscribe. I have a lot of new watch reviews coming up. Very excited to be picking up the pace on this channel. Really cool stuff. Again, a big shout out to Rosemary. Thank you very much for picking this up for review. So yeah, stick around. I have many more watch reviews and a couple of other interesting watch related videos uh, coming to the channel fairly soon. So I will see you all then.